Hello, everybody. This is Christina Fasonic broadcasting live from Wheeling, West Virginia tonight, like I almost always am. I want to bring on my co-host, Dr. Damian Dresick, who is inside like he almost always is. I am, Christina. I am inside tonight, but I am I am inside upstairs. I thought a little variety in our show would be good. How are things tonight in Wheeling, West Virginia? Well, they're pretty good. I would be outside broadcasting where I prefer to be, but it's starting to get dark early because of the change of season. So mm -hmm. here I am inside. So tonight um, we have a great writer on and I'm super excited about it because she's not only a fantastic writer, um, but she's also an incredibly good friend. So yep. let me tell you a little bit about Laura Jackson Roberts. Are you ready? I, I am. I, I've heard that, that her prose is sufficient to bring uh, to bring the light of day to the West Virginia uh, twilight. So perhaps when oh, she's ready, yes. you can walk out and it'll, everything will be illuminated. Most assuredly. Most assuredly. I guarantee it because she certainly illuminates my life. So Laura Jackson Roberts is an environmental writer and a humorist from Northern West Virginia, specifically Wheeling. And I'm very happy to have a Wheeling uh, writer on tonight. She holds degrees in environmental science and creative writing. A graduate of Chatham University, her work has appeared in many publications, including Hippocampus, Terrain.org, Brevity, Defenestration, Brainchild, Bayou Magazine, the Museum of Americana, Animal, and the Irma Bombach, Bombach Humor Site. She served as an editor for Literary Mama Magazine and is a VP of West Virginia Writers, the state's largest writing and literary organization. Laura lives and does freelance work in Wheeling, where she writes for Wheelunk and is finishing a book of humorous essays on life in West Virginia. And if anybody can make life in West Virginia funny, it's Laura. So, hello, Laura. Hey, everybody. It is so fantastic to have you on the show. I've been it's so good to be here. You know, I'm so excited. I um, I actually put on pants for this. Well, as far as you know, I could stand up and prove it, but well, take my word for it. I might yeah. have put on pants for this. Do you see this? Phyllis is here and she says, impressive. Yes. So um, what are you going to read for us tonight? You're going to read a piece of an essay, right? This is an essay I have been working on that's going to go in my book of, I don't like to say West Virginia humor because I don't like that connotation, but humorous tales from West Virginia. I didn't really even have a title for this essay. I keep coming up with a title and throwing it out, but it is about it's sort of a primer for driving on West Virginia's country roads. It talks about the five essentials that you need to drive on West Virginia's country roads. And for the record, those are a paper map, fuel, nerve, faith, and Dramamine. And I am specifically going to be covering a paper map in this particular section of this essay this evening. This sounds fantastic. Are we ready to let her go, Damien? I, I'm certainly ready to hear. I, I, well, I'll do my best to illuminate the entire uh, no, yeah. <laughs> we'll catch you, right? We will see you in and, and Christina, watch out. There is I've noticed there is a wild animal behind you. <laughs> oh my so, cat. But, Toby the cat is in here somewhere. So Toby. Okay. Well if you have blood on you and, and scratches when, when we come back, I'll know what happened. Oh yes, that's right. You'll know exactly what happened. <laughs> All right, Laura. I'll see you in a few minutes. All righty, thank you. So this is the as of yet untitled section, a paper map. Before we had cars with built-in navigation systems, my husband, Sean, bought a Garmin. Whereas I was born with an internal compass and can find my way most anywhere by instinct alone, Sean gets lost in the basement. It's not his fault, he's just directionally challenged. We all have our things. I can't catch a ball or hit a ball or kick a ball. I hate balls. I'm also a map nerd. I keep paper maps in my car and God, I hate that Garmin. Sean named her Beulah and that bitch loves to run roughshod over me. The stink of her smug superiority wafts all over the car. She and I butt heads constantly. I've been a West Virginia resident all my life 
so I know my way around. I don't need Beulah. My dad taught me to use real maps, but the back roads of West Virginia confuse Sean. They're often marked with just a square piece of reflective metal with a country road number on it. And if you're lucky, one of those brown tourist signs. If I'm traveling to an unfamiliar place, my inclination is to study a paper map and my trusty gazetteer for a few days prior and have them on hand in the car. I'm a planner. Sean prefers to let Beulah do the thinking. All he has to do is tell her where he wants to go and she's happy to be his navigator. The thing is, once in a while, Beulah fucks up. Sometimes it's because construction has altered the roads. Sometimes it's because Beulah's software needs an update. Sometimes that travel trollop is just plain wrong. Like the time she swore a decommissioned for forest service road would get us over Laurel Mountain. We ended up in a trench, nose first, high on a ridge in Barber County. After her abject failure that day, she seemed to know she'd screwed us and conveniently lost her signal for several hours. That's a West Virginia quirk. GPS can lose signal. You'll see notes on businesses' websites that say, use our directions, GPS won't work, you will get lost. It happens. And even when they do get signal, GPS units are not always trustworthy. In January of 2014, the Pocahontas Times reported a 58-foot Dollar General delivery truck went astray in the mountains of Pocahontas County. The driver, a Mr. Jamie King of North Carolina, was hornswoggled by his own navigation system, which took him on the shortest route to his destination in the town of Marlinton. It did not, however, warn him about the narrowness, icy conditions, and hairpin turn his truck would slide off. This is my third time in West Virginia, King told the Times. When the GPS told me to take the back road, I said, Lord Jesus, Lord have mercy. Driver and truck were okay, thanks to his skill and level-headedness. But with no cell service, he had to rely on the abundant kindness of strangers, one of whom took him in for the night and fed him breakfast in the morning. It's no wonder I don't trust Beulah. She's gotten us into similar trouble, and that hag has never once made me breakfast. What's more, I detect subtle attitude when we pick a route she has not endorsed. Turn left in one mile. Turn left in half a mile. Take the next left. Recalculating. The way she says recalculating reminds me of the way my mother used to sigh when she was mad at us. Instead of saying, hey, you deadbeats, get back in here and do the dishes. She simply exhaled a long pointed gust of raging wind and we knew we were in trouble. Likewise, Beulah is totally passive aggressive. She sounds like she's holding her nose when she says recalculating. You can hear her disgust. Oh, for fuck's sake, you boobs. I told you, turn left, left. It was so simple. Now I have to start all over again and come up with a new route. You'll probably screw up anyway. Why do I even bother? You know what? Do whatever you want. Get lost, end up in a pond. I don't even care. When Beulah and I disagree, I usually go the way my internal compass directs because I trust it. But when I'm wrong, it really sucks. Beulah says to go right up here, Sean will say. I disagree, I say back. Are you sure, he asks. I just don't think she's right. I don't trust her. He's silent for a few mo moments as the paved road crumbles to gravel and then the gravel dissolves into dirt. I think this is a game trail, Sean says. It's not a game trail, I say back and keep driving. Sean bites his tongue for a few more minutes as rhododendrons scrape the paint off the side of the car and the dirt softens into peat. Laura, I think we're in a bog. We're not in a bog, it's just a puddle. Honey, there's a beaver swimming past my window. Eventually, when water starts coming up through the floor, I'm forced to concede that I may have made a wrong turn somewhere. But I stopped short of admitting that I should have listened to Beulah seven miles ago. Sean sits in the passenger seat with a smug look on his face. He has endless faith in her, and he likes to have her on in the background because she helps him orient himself. Our deal is she can stay on if he shuts her up. She has to be muted. Recently, he bought a new Garmin. It speaks with a British accent. It came with the name James. James doesn't have Beulah's attitude. He recalculates like a gentleman with no sighing or audible irritation. I don't love him 
but I'm pretty sure he'd hate that uppity Beulah if they met on the dashboard. Thank you. <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> Uh, very, very you, you are, um, A, A I, I, I want to say wonderful things about your essay, but I have to, con you are our first author in like something like 50 people to use the word hornswoggled. <laughs> That's one of my absolute favorite words, and I think it should make a comeback. There's an entire list of words from the 20s that really need to come back, and hornswoggled is right up there at the top. Oh, it was, it was a beautiful deployment thereof. Thank you. Thank you. I can deploy. <laughs> Is the night illuminated, though? That is the question, right? Well, I've decided that the, the GPS H because I have the same thing. I, I, I love the way you, you articulate what we're all actually thinking. Um, <laughs> the, the GPS hatred is a prerequisite for friendship. Yes, it's true. That, I, I'm going to disagree. I think we had one of those British accent ones, and it sounded like the most officious. Oh. Like, it, it's it's. It makes it makes me remember like like I love England except for all the English. <laughs> Honestly, Beulah is the worst. The worst. I'd like to drop her in a pond if I get a chance. Sometimes when we can't find James, Beulah comes out, and I just I hate her guts. I hate her. Obviously, I'm very passionate about Beulah. No, no, I, I have yeah, right there with you. Yeah, yeah. So I I have a question then. <clears throat> so. How much more important is this GPS or less now that you have this pop-up trailer that you're going to be towing behind oh your car? Gosh. Yes, we just got the pop-up trailer. And Sean's really good at backing it up. And I am not. And I don't love that either. <laughs> um, so, now, so now you have to find, like, if you're going to turn around, you can't just do a three-pointer and pull out. You have to find, like, a loop. And now Beulah's going to make it way worse. We're going to die out there. <laughs> Well, I, I love your mother, you know that, but I did like the comparison of uh, Beulah's size with your mother's passive aggressive, gusty w venting. I could just imagine that in my mind. So. Oh, well, the children say I do the same thing and they're just terrified when I do it. And Sean too, he says, when you make that noise, we just leave. We know. <laughs> just pack it in. Huh? Yeah. Well, you were wonderful as I knew you were. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. You were so great. Yeah, thank you. So you were at last year's Wakona uh, yeah. here in Wheeling, and you know that this year we had to go virtual. And so we wanted to remind everybody that uh, Wakona starts tomorrow, um, Friday night, with um, a reading by uh, Dick Haig, who is an, uh, an outstanding poet from Ohio who grew up in this area. Um, and he will be reading a couple of poems from the new uh, journal, the Northern Appalachia Review. And then Saturday is the whole conference all day long until four o'clock. So um, we hope to see some of our regular listeners there and tell your friends. If you didn't register, um, there will still be opportunities to participate um, that'll be on our page all day long that you can join in that'll be live broadcast. So, And you don't have to wear pants. No, you don't. Absolutely not. <laughs> you mean me personally? <laughs> or just our whole audience? I, I, I want to. It depends on where the camera is for the presenters. You okay, know. okay. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night um, for uh, Dick Hegg's reading. And we hope to see you at Wakona on Saturday. And if not, we'll see you next Thursday when we have our new, our next writer. So. See everybody later, and thank you, Laura. Hi, thank Thanks, you. everybody, for tuning thank in. You. Thank you.